It is no surprise that growth mode is one of the more popular game modes. I would argue it is the most popular, except maybe outside of Clan Wars for some reason. But to fully understand this mode, we must first understand the mechanics. Oh, and just so we're clear, we're only talking about the growth mode itself, not Dreadnoughts or any other mode that uses growth. Firstly, once you reach a certain level, there are 69 potential upgrades you can have. Yes, 69 upgrades, grow the hell up. So with this in mind, you can upgrade all of the skills that affect your bullets, if you so want to. You grow in mass with every level you achieve, and the fixed increment is at a constant value. That some Arasio nerd will tell us, go ahead, and just like in Agario, the bigger your mass, the slower you are. But of course, the stronger your bullets, and the bigger your bullets. Now you might think this will come as a buff. I don't fully agree. I will agree when it's tanks like Annihilator. I know I keep showing the same footage from my 34 million Annihilator video, but it is good footage for a good explanation. There isn't much of a difference with some tanks, but if you are to consider that the bullet size is relative to your mass, you can easily argue that it is a nerf, not a buff, simply because the bullets are easier to hit. Since Annihilator can insta-kill by default, this is not much of an issue, and if you are at a high enough level, your barrel can be so huge that no player can even guess where you're shooting, until it's too late. Now with movement speed of tanks, every tank has a default value. Now of course, the more movement speed you have, the faster you are, that's basic stuff. For every level you obtain, you lose a fraction of that speed. And again, the increment is most likely at a constant value. Again, ratio nerds, feel free to tell us. So do not be surprised if you lose a lot of speed when you kill a player, especially when you begin. Most tanks have the same default value, but keep in mind some do have a different value, either faster or slower. Consider at very high levels you are extremely slow, which makes you an easy target for smaller, lower level players. Recoil also plays a big factor as well. Some tanks like the Destroyer and Triangle Branch have quite a fair amount of recoil, and thus may not die so much. You will not see many high scoring Smasher tanks, as the main thing they are used for is killing other high score players, or trying to. Even if you do have some little success, your speed, movement speed, without any way to defend yourself, especially in a free-for-all game, will not help you. Auto Smasher though? That's an interesting topic. Imagine 12 upgrades for one skill instead of 9. There are a lot of things you can do here. Still an easy target though. But let's not underestimate Auto Smasher or any tank with an auto turret. Auto Smasher in particular, where you can have 12 upgrades, those auto turrets can be very strong. If you leave yourself vulnerable, then you can quickly die. It's that simple, really. Now if we look at Infester, it is rather interesting. Whilst every other tank and their respective drones increase in size, you can have Infester drones that are not your size. Well, except maybe Necromancer, but Infester is the real culprit. How does this happen? You obtain the eggs, the pellets, from the map. And for some particular reason, this makes Infesta really strong. But only if you have the small drones with the large drones, or just have every drone small, that's also an option. But something tells me that shouldn't happen, who knows. Speaking of drone tanks, they are one of the only tanks that can actually use their field view to their advantage. The others include any other trap tank where you can shoot your traps depending on where your mouse is. So what you see here, this is their field of vision. But it is also the range where they can kill you. Well, except this particular part here. But let's say that didn't exist. This whole area, it's basically the death zone. Just be glad I wasn't infested here, because this would have been game over for all of them. The only difference is, those drones would not attack players in their base. And even if they did, they wouldn't be strong enough. Traps as a whole can work, but the problem is you'll be picking off much weaker players, more than actually killing players with some good high score. Because keeping in mind, the higher level they are, the harder it is to kill them because they have more skill upgrades. 
which does raise the question as to why and how certain players such as myself can gain such a high score. First, killing players in their base, which was necessary to obtain a much higher score, as I was base bound. But seriously, if you take away killing players in their base, that is actually the main reason. It is very rare for many players, high score players that is, to kill players with a high scoring growth mode. That's just a fact. And since you become so huge that you can become base bound, unless you're that kind of player that has 40 million score and like to move around in such places, which I don't recommend, you will almost never kill them. Your best bet is that they become so huge that they outgrow the base so that there's a potential weak spot to kill them. Which actually almost happened here, believe it or not. Although in this particular case, I could move, thanks to the recoil of the Annihilator bullet. I'm telling you, it's still useful, even at this size. This player was a saint, by the way. And it also helped that Factory is just annoying as hell in growth mode. And since drones, bullets and traps do not lose their speed once deployed, Factory at a high score can be incredibly annoying to deal with. However, not many tanks have that luxury. So if this server did not disconnect, my inevitable death would have been this. My inevitable death would have been a bunch of players swarming me, finding the weak spot and killing me because I was just too big for the base. This is also why being with your team is necessary because you can have a bunch of small tanks who are much faster than you swarm you before you enter your base and you can easily die quickly whether or not they are witch hunters is irrelevant this is something you have to deal with at least in growth mode and if we are to look at tanks like Octotank and Cyclone for a single minute you're gonna see them camp the middle a lot more whether it is a maze mode or a non maze mode you are just going to see it speaking of maze mode if you are in portal maze and you are too big to even fit through the maze walls you have no choice but to enter the portal and when you enter the portal you best be prepared and you also better have some good luck on your side especially because this could happen to you if you enter the portal at the wrong time and if you get thrown out in the wrong place you have nothing else to do but accept your own death this doesn't necessarily affect certain tanks but if you do not have recoil on your bullets you will have a harder time and most importantly I will urge you not to do this because if you cannot make it into the portal in time well say goodbye to your very high score last thing in portal maze imagine being so huge that you can attack players on the other side of the map only with insta kill tanks like annihilator now when it comes to arms race the majority of what i said about the main tanks also applies here as well however i am going to focus on one tank in particular a class so infamous in Maze, I think you know which one I'm talking about. And since it has such a unique use in Maze, I think it deserves some attention. Because it definitely affects this tank. Yes, I am talking about the wrench. Access through the crowbar tree. You have already seen the scenario where wrench can easily fit its turrets through these walls. Well, how about a scenario when you are big enough, you can fit your turrets through multiple blocks. Not to mention you can easily do this in a position where you are unharmed. I would say it's a very good tank, maybe even the top tier. However, there is a lot riding on this, mainly because it is a double-edged sword. Whilst you can certainly obtain kills like these, especially at a much lower level, and that's all well and good, you are far too vulnerable for your own good. Because the bigger you are, the easier it is to go beyond the turrets basically inside your barrel and if that happens your turrets will not pick up and they will shoot another player or another shape it's the same scenario with any tank like infester no recoil you cannot move fast enough you will need a team to survive at least you can attack bosses with these that's a good sign another bad sign however invisible tanks in arms race permanently invisible tanks are an issue auto turrets do not attack tanks that are invisible Rogue, Limpet, you name it. It is not a tank that is ultimately broken. There are a lot of strengths to it as there are weaknesses. And that applies to Growth Maze as well. Let's also not forget factory drones. You cannot be expected to sit comfortably in one area for long periods of time in Maze without a factory user. 
directing their factory drones towards you. If anything, it's the main reason why wrenches die. Or most tanks for that matter. Now, since we're in maze, as I've said before, there is a certain level where you cannot enter through simple maze walls. This player here is in trouble. Unless there's a bunch of lower level players that push this player through the maze walls, this player is just going to have to accept their death. Again, what is it about accepting deaths, you say? This is just a fact of life. And accepting it, they did. They knew it was coming. But this is not how you obtain a huge high score. It is not. Now, if you want to talk about the mass of these tanks, of course, the slower you are, the harder it is to escape. But what about when there are multiple players trying to escape the crutches of the other team? That's when it gets difficult, and that's when the mass is too much. And in this case, and of course it's in my case, I am the one that suffers from it. And when I said you have to look out for factory drone tanks, you really have to. Because they are like a hawk and they will find you and kill you whenever they can, especially when they have their field of vision. Basically the death trap. So with a tank like Wrench, you have to stay as far away as possible. But not too far, because of course you want kills. So that's the premise of how growth mode can affect certain tanks. Movement speed, bullet speed, bullet power. The barrels of the tanks being too big that certain players can go underneath it and they cannot be harmed. Even though I have said all of this, it wouldn't surprise me if there are more mysteries to unravel. Like this. What in the living hell is happening here and why is it happening? So there is nothing else for me to talk about here. Feel free to say what I've missed or what I'm wrong about. Because I'm sure there's something I am missing. Now have fun in growth, because I know you will.